This episode of Cello Chat is brought to you by Carriage House Violins of Johnson String Instrument. Please visit us at www.carriagehouseviolins.com. And we're now live. Should I start now? <laughs> yeah, we're now live. Uh, thanks, Isaac, for uh, arranging this this uh, cello bello chat on, over Zoom. My name is Rorick Cunningham. Uh, a little bit about me: I'm from New Hampshire, and I went to college at the Juilliard School with uh, J- Natasha Brofsky and Clara Kim, and I'm very fortunate to be a new member of the Boston Symphony. And I wanted to talk today. the The title was originally the process behind taking an audition, but as I started thinking about what to say, I realized that an audition is really a performance, and so it, it can be under the umbrella of just preparing for a performance. So I figured I would gear it in that direction and learning how to prepare for a performance and the stage. And an audition really is could even be like, a, uh, a more glorified version of a performance because you really have to really have to sell your ideas on it. So um, I'll just start here. My notes. Uh, we we tend to forget that practice is not only just the physical part of playing cello and learning to get your ideas down. We tend to practice and leave the practice sort of in the practice room without realizing that we also have to practice to perform. We often find that first time performing can be rather daunting, especially the day of, you feel those nerves. And when sometimes when you, when you play in studio for the first time, or even sometimes your teacher, but especially playing in studio because that's usually the first time we, we perform, we notice that things don't go as planned. A lot of things that we never thought would go wrong just suddenly aren't working. And I, you know, it happened to me a lot and I, and I try to think, why, why does it happen? And, and it's not necessarily always the spots that gave you so much trouble, but it's sometimes just random spots that you never you never thought would go wrong, but you, you quickly realize anything can happen when you're performing. And so how to, how to mitigate those risks in ways so that you, you're still playing your best. Like uh, there, there'll always be small mistakes, but you, you really want to be playing comfortably enough so that you come through as a player, as an artist with ideas. So, I want to talk about how to how to get ready for that performance day and how to how to prepare for that. So I would say the easiest step to start with is play for friends, play for other uh, studio mates, or just other friends of different instruments close to yours. So if you're a cellist, ask violinists, violists, bassists. They you, you'll be surprised that how much good information you can get even from people who don't play your instrument or the rep that you play. But simply playing for friends as a first step is is a nice sort of icebreaker because it's the easiest way to perform. It's the most low key, but at the same time you get to experience what it's like to run through things even if it's just short pieces and you talk in between. But having that that set up that that day and time you're going to play for somebody that that is kind of like a mini performance and through that you can you can start to learn a little bit about yourself and how you how you how you perform in front of actual people instead of just playing in the practice room because in the practice room there's there's really nothing to lose so we're at our lowest at our lowest stress point in the practice room. So playing for friends is a really great first step into learning how how to perform. And some things will arise when you play for your friends. 
you'll notice how some things feel different. Maybe you might actually get nervous in some parts. It's possible. I've had that happen. But it's, it's a really great first step. And then, of course, all the, the really good feedback of, play, of just ideas in the rep and ideas for playing in general, it's good to take in a lot of information that way. So playing for friends, definitely best first step. Play for as many friends as you can and even all the way until the performance day. Try to schedule as many playthroughs for friends as you can. It, it gets you in that performance mode. Like every day, every other day, you really want to be in the, in the habit of just doing run-throughs because when you're on the stage, you have to rely on a little bit of autopilot. It, it's, a, it, it, it's realistic to think that some things, sometimes your mind is going to wander. You're not necessarily going to be 100% on everything, but as long as everything feels steady and everything is worked out, then that, that's a good thing. And along with playing with friends, I would say uh, you have your major teacher or your, your one teacher, but it's also good to outsource and to try playing for other teachers as well, especially people who, who've experienced all this uh, in terms of auditions or doing performances. So whether or not it's other teachers at the college, usually I would say try, try um, musicians in the local orchestra, play for a couple of them because they've gone through this audition circuit and chances are they've heard a lot of people before you, so they, they've gained a lot of ideas through observing and learning from others and simply just talking to other people about audition taking, audition taking or doing performances. You, you pick up on methods on how to prepare for that and of course their experience of teaching that rep is really good because a lot of people have played them that rep before. So it's really good to get other ideas along with your main teacher. Your main teacher is great because they know you're playing the best, so they know how to steer you. But it's a lot of times really helpful to get other ideas from teachers who don't know you so well because they, they, they haven't worked with you. And so it's kind of a fresh start in that way. Uh, oh yes. Uh, some people may disagree, but I think listening to as many recordings as possible of what, of what you're playing because you gain a lot of ideas and what I like to try to do is the ideas that intrigue me a lot, I try to simulate them because when you try different ideas, you, you can learn more about how your, how your body works normally and then physically and mentally trying to get to try other things it, it requires an effort outside of what you're used to and so getting getting used to trying different things gets yourself to experience different ways of doing things and those experiences of just doing things differently really help in solidifying your own ideas because you start you start working out how to make your own ideas stronger or figuring out if there are stronger ideas than yours and trying to see how other people accomplish those ideas, even ideas you originally didn't agree with, but somehow they make it work. It, it, can, it can really be an eye-opener to just listen to how other people approach things because you'll learn a lot, even from players that aren't necessarily your favorite there's usually going to be something there that intrigues you and it's it's a great process trying to figure out what they do and what about them makes that work. So listen to a lot of recordings, try not to be stuck on just a couple because then you'll have their image in your head of what the music is supposed to be and it's it's good over time to have taken all these ideas because they will, they will shape your own ideas and you'll come up with new ideas 
whether or not it's based on a specific passage or hearing other musical examples to influence how you can shape a different passage in a more unique way, it, it really is helpful. So I would listen to a lot of recordings and also in terms of getting prepared yourself for performing and playing for friends and other teachers, try getting other friends to play, not getting them to play for you, but be open to listening to other friends too. You'll be surprised how much you can learn from your friends and just giving them advice because you start to realize some more habits about yourself maybe or you, you learn what they do so well and maybe what they might not do as well and you may have ideas to add to theirs and by simply working through their ideas to make them even better you, you gain those ideas for yourself and you start learning how to make ideas in general more convincing so play, hearing friends even on other instruments I, I think it's great uh, to hear of several different instruments because there's a lot to learn but just simply giving ideas and even working with others because teaching is in an in and of itself a way of learning and it's something a lot of us don't get to experience while we're a student so try try listening to a lot of people too and and working with them you'll be surprised at what you can pick up by just by just experiencing what they have to share and their journey and their process and how they learn things it, it can teach you a lot about yourself um, before I keep going, are there any questions? Yeah, we have a few questions uh, from a uh, user named Garden Shi. Um, uh, she asks, what do you do about nerves even after playing for friends? I feel like I'm never able to perform my best on stage. Uh, yeah, so nerves after playing for friends. Well, I guess that can go into the next step, which is playing in studio a lot. First of all, you should, you should play in studio a lot instead of just once or twice a semester because as, as like anything else, performing requires practice and the only way to practice performing is to actually perform. So playing in the studio is, as much as possible, even if it's just different rep, you want to get in the mindset of being a performer and doing it regularly. Uh, a lot of people at the top, like Yo Yo Ma, Gautier Capuçon, they, they perform all the time, every day, every other day. So they're constantly in that performance mode. They, they don't need to practice performing because they, they've learned through time how to, how to work through their nerves in that way and I would say working through nerves requires a lot of practice in performing and studio is the best way to do that and if you're not in a college that has studio it's like I said trying to find other teachers to play for new people because playing in front of new people is also stressful and playing for people who have a reputation that can also get give you nerves and the best thing you can do for yourself before a performance is to find situations where you're nervous. Or even I've heard some people say before you practice, uh, do, do some sort of exercise to get your heartbeat going because that can kind of simulate those nerves. But there's, there's definitely more I have to talk about on just conquering performance in general. Is there, I, I hope that answers the question so far. I think maybe some later in the talk something will probably resonate but are there I can take another question yeah another one is what do you think is the purpose of practicing what is your process or strategy to make something that was initially challenging to you to make it easy uh, making making something challenging into something easy 
Well, the first step is always trying to practice slowly, just get the notes in your fingers. But after, after a while of that, sometimes it doesn't feel like it's getting much easier, even though it, at the initially things pick up pace in, in how much you can, can take in and it, it gets easier at first, but then sometimes you hit a rut at the beginning of the process where it doesn't feel like it's getting easier. That's when I would say take you're, you're, you're really close into the cello, you're practicing a lot. That's when I kind of just step back, let, let, let everything relax, and then maybe look around the room and do something with your body physically to change the way you played it before. One of the best things, the best tools to learn something really hard and to make it easier is by doing it in different ways. And whether, whether or not it's using more bow or more energy or more volume or less volume or just different bow distribution, try Try trying things in as many different ways as possible and you'll be surprised how many, how many ways you'll find in making a hard passage easier because it, it just changes things up a little bit. You'll, you realize what you were, something of what you were doing before made it more difficult to make that passage more manageable. I hope that answers that. Um, I can continue talking for now because I feel like some of those questions started to bleed into more concepts I wanted to talk about. Uh, one of the best things you can do when getting into performance mindset in practice room or in front of people or anywhere First of all, try to find a big room to practice in from time to time. You want to ideally some sort of stage or recital hall, but I know that's not very practical, but even just a larger classroom or at some church, you really want to hear your sound going around. I, I have this theory where if you can kind of take in the room, then it takes you away from focusing too hard on what's happening here and and you can kind of feed off the energy of the big room and there's a lot of ways to to take in that big room uh, a lot of which has to do with feeling the space around you especially if you're if you're practicing in a really small practice room and the walls are like here it can be really detrimental to you're playing in general and getting your ideas across because getting ideas across can take effort and effort takes more can take more physical effort sometimes moving more it's it's never great to just stay rock solid I'm not not a huge fan of moving too much but always staying a little more relaxed in how your body can move back and forth even on a small scale. So one way of taking the big room, if you're, if you're doing something like high and D and you start out kind of dense or slow, like, you know, it, it's okay, but it may not be taking in the, big, the, the room around you. And the way to kind of feed off the room, the size of the room, the size of the space and all the air in the room that you're playing for. You may want to do something physically, like taking up more of the space. So it may require more bow. But that, that, is, that is, I think, a really important concept of performing because when performing, you want to play for the room, play for all the people in the room. Uh, are there any questions? Uh, yes, we have one from Lillian Yim. She asks, can you talk about your warm-up routine? What do you listen for when you're warming up? Or is there anything that you think about in particular before you start practicing? Warm-up routine. I wish I could recommend 
some sort of specific method, but my own warm-up routine usually consists of maybe not necessarily uh, scales in a in a orthodox way, but playing scales to find resonance, playing notes to find resonance, playing random notes and making random melodies to find my own sound. I think it's always important to try finding your sound early on in the practice session because your sound is is you and on a technical uh, aspect finding the resonance of the instrument always always trying to find how the instrument wants to play so if I'm, if I'm just playing random notes I may try like a D major scale I may find where where can the note resonate the most on that D? Where is the, the cello most happy at? Am I crushing the sound? Am I letting the sound have more width to it? Am I trying to get a deeper sound? Or more fluffy? But it's all in the goal of trying to find sounds that the cello want to produce. And so if I keep going further, There's still a lot of resonance there to look out for and looking for your sound. Looking for your sound can also come in the form of doing vibrato things, just finding... Finding colors in your own sound and trying to experience colors, more colors, even in your warm-up routine. I think it's important to find your sound in through colors as well and getting yourself exposed to the possibilities of cello playing and music making and and exposing yourself to some tools that you'll use in your rep further into the into the practice session uh, are there any other questions yeah um, in practice, how do you separate feelings of frustration from the physical practice itself? Oh yeah, that is, that's a really good question. We, we tend to get frustrated if it doesn't seem like things are, are going well in our practice. There, it, it can really bring, bring us down when either we're we, we record, you should always record yourself a lot, but recording yourself and listening back to it can be really painful and it can, it can really humble us in, in, uh, and bring us down. What I would say is you always have to trust the process. There's a process there and it's, it's not a short process. As long as you keep, as you keep trying to do different things in your practice, try different ideas, finding ways of getting more ideas and trying to make them sellable to a listener. That's the best thing you can do, I think, other than a technical aspect. You can, of course, find technical exercises that may uh, tackle some technical things that might be going wrong, whether it's shifting, finding shifting exercises, really getting advice from people on how to shift. But, but yeah, sometimes we don't realize that becoming better as a musician is a long process. And so it can be hard to go through, go through that process. And even if you've accomplished a lot as a player, I've seen it in a lot of people, they're, they, they've gotten into the top schools or, or whatever, it, there, there's always frustration there. And I'm not sure it'll ever go away, but there are ways in learning to be more comfortable with yourself by experiencing going through different ideas. Because I would assume at a certain point you have, you have a lot of things worked out about your playing. And now it's just working on what, what can you add to your playing that you may, that make you do something different. Always try to look to do something different in your playing because it gives you, gives you uh, inspiration 
to keep going. But best answer is trust the process. It's a it's not a short one, and it it's often a very bumpy one. You can you can either get better for a long time, and then you feel like you have a drop in progress. But just keep going. I hope that answers that question. Um, let's see, do I have in terms of audition taking? Audition shouldn't be any different from a performance. If anything, you need to make it even more of a performance because when you're doing an audition, whether or not whether it's for a uh, an orchestral audition or a college audition, what they want to see is someone not only with technical abilities, but somebody who shows promise and can show ideas. What you really want to do is convey ideas as strongly as possible because if you can do that then the the person on the committee can see a lot of a lot a lot there to work with especially for college teachers cuz almost pretty much no one is going to be perfect so you have to find ways of expressing yourself in the best way possible and that would be trying to get as much conviction, even trying to convince yourself of your own ideas. You think you're doing your ideas, try going a little overboard on them. If it's some sort of dynamic, really try going a dynamic or two above or below. If it's a really soft moment or a really loud moment, you want to try finding ways of almost envisioning the hall in, in front of you and, and all the people, even if it's just in a classroom for your audition, the ideas need to shoot out. Uh, there are any more questions? Yeah. Um, what advice would you have for those of us taking auditions for the first time? Auditions for the first time. As in college auditions or orchestral auditions or just auditions in general. I'll try auditions in general. Um, well, like I said, audition is a performance and best way to perform is to learn performing is to play play for your friends. It can it can really help, especially the feedback and getting getting nerves out, finding way to, to get nerves can really help you for an audition and also like I said the best the best way to do well in an audition is to show who you are and what you can give as to the listener and in terms of your ideas I hope that answered that can we do next question yeah uh, how do you believe in yourself while performing Oh yes, while performing on the stage. Well, you really want to have, assuming that all practice is done and you've worked out things, you don't really want to be focusing as much on cello. Ideally, you want to be focusing less on cello and focus on the energy of the people listening to you and feed off of that whether or not you, you have a pianist with you or an orchestra you may want to you may want to look over to them because you're per performing musically is also showing it through inflection and you want to show that you're really living the music you don't you don't want to be focusing so much on what's happening here you want to you want to get away from here and by getting away from here being here, you focus that being in the environment around you can even make your ideas go further because it, it requires a physical and mental change. You, you've got everything here. This should, this should be almost completely autopilot. You've worked out everything. You're not going to get better on stage. So try to think about going on autopilot. Try envisioning 
the surrounding, feeling the surrounding and really taking it in and playing in the space that you're in. Uh, yeah, next question. We have one from Richard. He asks, uh, in practice, besides recording yourself, how do you know your ideas are coming out of your playing? When I record what I envision in my head sometimes does not come out in my playing. Yeah, I've noticed that sometimes the devices in which we record on can kind of lie about our sound. Our sound in reality is what we hear in real life, in the room, in, in the size of the room. Many rooms are different, but also the resonance of the instrument. A recording can, can give us a false impression of our sound because it tends to put things more on a 2D surface and you can't hear a lot of things about your own sound through the recording, which is the resonance you produce. You can't tell as much if you're pressing too much or you need more sound. So don't rely, it's a good thing to have as a reference but try relying more on playing for others and getting other people's feedback on whether the ideas are coming across. And it may require asking specifically, like, is, is a certain passage here? Is it coming across with, is how, how I envision it and explain what you want to do? And then it may, it may spark them to think, oh, well, if you do some more of this, it'll come out more. Try, try doing things like that. I've found that a lot, the reality of listening to yourself in a recording isn't always 100% what is happening in real life. So just specifically ask people uh, certain questions in, in trying to help in getting your ideas across. But yeah, um, next question. Oh, great. I think that marks... Um... Uh, all the questions we have from people for now. So feel free to write more in the chat. Uh, but if you want, I can move to our questions from the In the Practice Room blog series. Uh, um, well, let me think, is there anything about performance? Oh, I can talk about the day of the performance. So the day of the performance, often the worst part is not performing, but be the, the before going on stage, the hours before the day of. Um, some people say eat a banana to calm nerves down. I'm not sure. I don't. I don't really eat anything just because I'm worried it'll it'll make my stomach upset or something because of all the nerves. But at the on the day of the audition, you shouldn't necessarily be practicing and drilling like you were. Everything on the audition day or a performance day, it should be there. You should, have, you should have everything worked out. One of the best strategies I've found is if you know what you're starting with or just starting anything in general, just practice starting it. Play for 30 seconds to a minute, the beginning of what you know you're going to start with. And then I would just put the cello down, walk around for a couple minutes, two, three minutes, then come back to the instrument, don't do anything, but start the same thing. And then keep going through that process. You, you, you get into the, the mindset of just playing without, because you're not gonna be playing right before you start performing. There's gonna be some time where you just stand up and wait there. So on performance day, practice starting things, just, just do run-throughs. I wouldn't necessarily try new things on the day of. It it's, can sometimes not be in your favor. Just take what you have. Your ideas are probably really good. And yeah, show what you are at the, the best version of yourself on that day. Um, are there any chats at this point or should we go into the other questions. Uh, it looks like that are that that covers all the questions. 
uh, from the chat for now. So I can move to our in the practice room questions if you like. Sure. OK, great. Um, let's start with, in your mind, what is it that makes an effective practice session? Oh, yeah. I like when, when, when I come back from a practice session and it feels like it went well, it's usually because you've, you've tried new ideas. You feel like you've accomplished something differently than you have before when when practicing for an audition or performance we tend to have the same repertoire for months at a time and halfway through that learning process we've basically learned all the notes so it's just figuring out at some point we need to go further in the practice and that usually involves trying new ideas so a good practice session can be learning learning something new with the ideas in the repertoire having listened to more more players and trying it but really feeling like there's there's a new dimension to your playing that you you hadn't seen before you feel you tend to feel more comfortable after after trying new things and I mean especially if the practice session just technically went well things are just working uh, not sure how to not sure if that answered it completely but that's what I have for now yeah great um, the next one is uh, what is your balance between technique and repertoire in practicing balance between technique and repertoire. Well, I mean, I usually like to choose my repertoire based on what I feel like I want to work on in my technique or something about an aspect of my playing. So if I'm, if I'm more trying to get lyrical playing, you might want to do something like The Swan or Dvorak, Silent Woods, or I don't know, Shostakovich uh, duo pieces. Try to find rep that really, really uh, tackles something that you want to do at that moment in, in your process. So the technique, the technique uh, incentives changes from repertoire to repertoire, but try to be specific on what what about the repertoire or specific piece you're trying to get and add to your technique because I think of technique more as a toolbox and whatever you can use in your toolbox for a certain piece or and change for another what you're essentially doing is adding more to your technique adding more to your toolbox over time it always it always should uh, be towards a greater uh, understanding of music making in general. So applying the repertoire you play to the technique, uh, tailored, yeah. Awesome. We have a couple more questions from people. Uh, okay. Richard asks, when you were in college, how did you balance learning orchestral repertoire and your solo repertoire for your lessons? Oh, yes. Um, well, when you're doing orchestral repertoire try to get a bunch of different people to, to play for because what you don't want to do is be in the audition circuit for a long time and be so boggled down with excerpts that you keep playing excerpts every week uh, to the to your teacher because most teachers don't want to hear excerpts and the same ones every week so balancing balancing the orchestral stuff and actual repertoire it's first of all for the first audition it's natural to spend almost all your time on doing the orchestral stuff because you're just learning it but after the first two or three times you've learned most of the excerpts there are to learn so at that point i would say once you've learned most of those things, 
don't spend so much time, so much energy, and don't bring them to your lessons too much. The best way to get better in any aspect is to just keep doing more rep. Don't go through rep like crazy. I'm not, not saying you should learn one concerto every month, but it's, it's never good to be doing orchestral uh, repertoire so often because it prevents you from going further and discovering more about your own playing through different rep repertoire. There's, there's a lot you can learn from other pieces that you can apply to anything else that you've played in the past. So focus on, focus on, focus on learning new things. After, after you first learn those excerpts, they're not going away anytime soon. In fact, if you, if you have a few, if you have a couple months until the next audition and you've already done auditions, you probably don't even need to touch most of those excerpts until a couple weeks before because you already have them in your system and at that point it's just over time you lose a little bit of clarity so you just regain that clarity and in that time between you'll have learned new, new repertoire hopefully and your cello playing should just be different in general because you always want to be better each time and I think the better the way to get better is to not stick to the same orchestral rep. Uh, yeah, hope hope that answered your question. Awesome. Uh, Ji Hoon Kim says, "Hi, Rourke. I've seen a lot of your videos from when you were doing NYO. What did you do to really get your orchestra excerpts in top shape?" Uh, well, I mean, those NYO videos are not great representation, but. But yeah, to get the excerpts in shape, first of all, they, I mean, they, they do have to be technically solid. And one way to be solid is kind of going along with the autopilot. You want to play for people so much on your best day, on your worst day. You need to know everything about how you play on whether or not it's a good day or a bad day. It needs to be solid regardless. So something like Don Juan, that has to be, you kind of have to have a cold, a cold, be like stone solid on that. And it needs to just be there, whether or not you're thinking about it. But then the next step on getting excerpts really, really, really good is not forgetting that excerpts are music and there are different, characteristics for each excerpt, so always listening to recordings of the orchestral works. Excerpts are music, and of course there are traditions on playing individual excerpts. It's good to learn what those traditions are by playing for people who've played them before, like orchestral musicians or other friends in the audition circuit. You want to be aware of what the norm is, like for instance, Chike 4 is always on the D string instead of. I've heard some people have been told by committees never to go in A string, but they didn't know that. So always getting the, the tradition out of the way. But then, but then again, in the end, focus on showing who you are as a player, even through something as seemingly mundane as excerpts. That's the best way to succeed, I think. Great. And uh, our next in the practice room question, how many hours a day should one practice? Quality or quantity? Oh, yes. So I think, I mean, of course, it's a quality thing. I personally, I've always been around three hours is, is a really good place. And the way to make those three hours the most efficient as possible is to keep going through different ideas and doing things physically different from day to day. You never want to be doing the same, the same thing every day physically 
or conceptually. Always focusing on what you can do different because you can practice five hours a day and still not go as far if you keep doing if you keep doing the same thing every day it it can prevent you from other opportunities other other learning points about yourself just focus more on on the the mental and the mental aspect of playing music rather than technical technical is always more of a first stage and then the mental aspect can bring the technique further because technique is not just physical aspect it's never always just brain communicating to body but a lot of times it can be body communicating to brain doing what your body feels like doing in the moment can influence the music's effectiveness so always feel like in your practice sessions no matter how long it is that you feel like you're doing something convincing rather than drilling all day because I'm not sure how far drilling will get you but yeah great and along that line uh, what is your favorite way to change things up and get new ideas in the practice room oh yeah I mean getting new ideas can co usually come from different people like I said playing for friends and different to listening to different recordings and always just trying those ideas even if you don't agree with them how can you how can you maneuver around those ideas to make them something you can agree with because that will uh, in the end make you a better player anyway by by learning to do the same things many different ways you learn you learn more about yourself as a player you learn that there's more opportunities to to make something more sellable and finding ideas really comes comes across when you when you step back from the instrument maybe take a look around play if you're looking down and playing all the time maybe look up if you're playing and shoulders down maybe shoulders back maybe even playing really like too far back like yo yo ma because things just come out differently when you when you do things physically different and you may find that your body's ideas are influencing you to do something differently. I hope that answers that question. Great. Um, are there any habits you call like mental, physical habits that you cultivate in the practice room that makes you a more confident performer? Always acting like the practice room at some point in your practice, even in the practice room, you want to feel like you're performing on stage. You want to you want to do the things that you'd be doing on stage, like being more involved with the people playing around you, thinking about their part in your head, getting away from the cello a little bit more. Of course, a lot of our a lot of our practice is just trying to get things, but I would say in every practice session, try to aim towards imagining that you're performing something and, and you may just really fail what you're playing but that's all part of the uh, that's all part of the practice process but you, you always want to envision that you're on that stage awesome and uh, our final in the practice room question how has your practicing evolved over the years or even recently is there anything that has surprised you How's my practice involved during the years? Well, I would say definitely I used to try to get things more physically speaking or technically speaking. I would always try to, to go for some sort of perfection. But then one thing I've realized over time is that you lose so much in character and in, in a musical concept it, but just by doing the notes or playing the notes perfectly, you lose out on the most important part of just music making in general. You never want to be so boggled down with technique that it seems like the technique is not at service.
to what the music is trying to say. And what the music is trying to say may not always be in, 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 a, in a playing manner that's technically accurate. And maybe it's messy, but that's what the character is. Uh, I mean, I can think of an example right now, something like Beethoven A major sonata. We have this... Uh, some people might get caught up with just playing the notes, but first of all, the notes can't even be heard anyway. And so if you focus on the notes, maybe the character isn't coming across strongly enough because what you really want to do is be getting in that character of the anger of the moment. So you might want to do something like... You might want to do something crazy like that where it's just like not super accurate, but it gets the right idea across. So that's something I would say I've learned through, through my college years, I would say, from freshman to senior, is learning that the technique itself is not what makes the music, but looking at it from the other way around, what does the musical aspect, character, whatever it is, what does that have to do with the, the technical aspect of it? And allowing yourself to look at things from that way around instead of getting technical first mm -hmm. because if you always think technical first then you might never get around to the musical part unless someone points it out to you because we tend to get boggled down with playing it right all the time and we just get used to it try to get used to thinking about the character more because at that point when you're trying to make something a product of the performance, the technical part is almost secondary to what you're trying to convey. But definitely, don't, don't put technical as an absolute secondary. It should always be important, but, but yeah. Great, we just have a couple more questions from people. Um, let's see. Uh, when taking auditions for an orchestra, is it risky to be overly expressive or having too many ideas? Would you try to adjust the way you play in order to fit in an orchestra? Yeah, so this part, this part can definitely be, it's hard to say, but sometimes you have to limit yourself. Only sometimes, because an audition is usually 10 minutes behind the screen and there's a lot of first impressions that determine whether or not you pass around and those first impressions usually have to do with how solid you are, how good your rhythm is, how beautiful your sound is. Those are the, in essence, the, the first impressions and so you want to kind of tailor your playing when you're doing an audition for orchestra to to get those first impressions really solid because that's what, what that's what's going to pass you around and the ideas of your playing can can come more in later rounds if they're longer or even if the last round is behind a screen you definitely want to show that you have ideas it's a lot harder to to win an audition without showing how individual you are as a player but Definitely, of course, play for people in orchestras. Have them let you know if what you're doing is a little bit too strong or too outside of the norm that it might offset some people because in reality, what you're trying to get is the least amount of people to kind of jerk their head and be like, oh my goodness. You wanna, you wanna tailor yourself to as many people as possible. And sometimes that can involve toning your own ideas down a little bit and yeah, try to keep in mind that yeah, you wanna you wanna tailor yourself. Get get the advice from others. But always remember that you're playing music and if your ideas are too strong for an orchestra, orchestral panel maybe always think, are these ideas actually too strong or am I just doing something weirdly and could be doing it better? 
there's always that too. But yeah, just play for people and ask them if it's too strong. Awesome. And uh, another question from Michael. Can you talk about your experiences at orchestral auditions? What does the process look like once you arrive and how does the audition progress as you move through the rounds? Uh, yes. Um, well, my own experience, uh, my first, I took four auditions. My first one was BSO audition the first time and at that, that was my first audition and that was the first time practicing a huge list of excerpts and I played for a lot of people before that audition. I, I took it seriously. My only goal getting into that was to just pass first round. It, it's four rounds, it's a lot of rounds, but realizing when you're going in that you want to take full advantage of that, of the process, even on the first time, because don't expect to win your first audition. It's extremely rare. It happens, but it's extremely rare, but just know it's a process because simply being at the audition is a new experience. But I practice as if I were already, I had already taken many auditions. First of all, always know know your excerpts really well. Play with recordings. Put put on headphones. Play with recordings. Though those excerpts. Play for a lot of people. Your excerpts every day, every other day, if if not every day. And then on audition day, you usually arrive maybe an hour, even more beforehand. And auditions work in groups, usually an hour. So in an hour, they'll hear maybe five to seven people. And sometimes you won't play through all your excerpts. They, and, and don't worry if you don't play through it, all your excerpts. It doesn't necessarily mean you didn't pass a lot of times. The committee will just say we've heard enough and made a decision and so I've heard some people only play half the list but still pass the rounds and it, it happens um, it happens several times so don't worry too much about that but after those five or seven people in that hour the the proctor or the manager or whoever will come in and then name whoever the candidate number or their name and then you'll advance to the next round if you do advance if not then unfortunately that's the end but uh, more about the audition at the audition um, yeah definitely when you're at the venue that you're gonna be taking the audition don't overwork yourself and especially if there's more than one round in one day don't keep practicing endlessly because you'll get tired. You'll get tired really quickly. And I've had to take three rounds in one day before and just learn to take walks. Practice five, ten minutes at a time. Take a walk for ten minutes. You always want to practice essentially coming to the cello. Um, not, not, not totally cold, but don't don't get into practice for mindset at the venue. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any other specific questions about being at the audition, but I hope that answered some of them. Yeah, wonderful. Um, I think our final question is: Do you think that sitting position affects how you how relaxed you are when you play the cello? Do you have any tips to stay relaxed? Sitting position. Yes, always, and you, you kind of have to do this early on in your practice when you're first learning something. Always take micro breaks, like for a couple seconds after a few minutes of playing, you notice, maybe you start to notice that you're getting a little tight. Always take a step back, kind of cradle in the chair a little bit, and find, find your normal balance find kind of the equilibrium and then start from there because once you get into it you you over time creep up a little bit creep down head down shoulders down 
I'm guilty of this to this day. Try to take, take frequent steps back because the best way to get into the habit of doing something like being more relaxed is to actually relax frequently. So just stop, keep your back straight and stay straight and then start again in a relaxed way. That's the best way to get it in your system of being more relaxed. And then letting your body start to physically tell you what you can do musically. Because once, once you start to let your body do things, then your body has a lot to offer you in that way and simply engaging your body to help you out can, can help you relax because sometimes being the most still can be the most detrimental to your playing because maybe that means something is tensing up. But if you're, if you're moving a little bit, it can help keep things relaxed because by physically moving, yeah, muscles won't tense up as much. Great. I think that marks the end of our questions. Uh, if you could give any closing remarks, that would be great. And I'll let you know once the live broadcast has concluded. Any remarks? Well, always, always believe in the process. First of all, it's, it's a long process. Things don't happen in one day or a week. Always, always try new ideas because the ideas are what help you greatly in actually getting performance ready and one of the things one of the things about trying new ideas trying things different ways is on the day of anything anything can happen and it can be anywhere you think is just really solid but it's just how you come come out of it which which uh, makes or breaks you and knowing yourself more having gone through the process of all these things, it can really help in your solidity as a player anywhere on stage in a performance. So just just believe in in the ideas that you're doing. Yeah, that'll that's your best weapon towards performing. Great. Thank you so much, Warwick, for today's cello chat and thank you so much everyone for your wonderful questions in the chat and we'll look forward to our next cello chat uh, next Sunday.